You are now live. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Yeah, so she 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 had the ability Oh look. They work. They, they sound work. a little weird, but time to retire those. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. Hi, Roberto. Okay. Hello, Rachel. Good morning, Lydia. Did you see it says? Huh. Find me a place to volunteer. Oh. <laughs> morning, Danny. Are you ready? Yep. I don't know that I am. Okay, I'm ready. Welcome to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer Blackwell. And I'm Teresa Straub. We are here live on Z93 and Outlaw Country radio stations. You can also stream our show from our website at monstermediayuma.com or watch us on our Facebook live feed right now, either on my personal page or on the station page. Yes, we want to say good morning to all of our Facebook live viewers so far. I see Cody, Kathy, uh, Rachel, Ashley, Danny, Lydia, Roberto, and I know there's, I think Cindy was on there. There's a couple more that I can't see, but good morning to all of you. If you do not currently follow us on Facebook Live, we encourage you to do so. It's just a way to get a behind the scenes of what goes on when Z93, Outlaw Country, and MonsterMediaYuma.com all go to commercial break. Jennifer and I stay live the whole entire hour. Now we're going to start right off the bat. Sergeant Lori Franklin is going to be with us a little bit later in the show. She is. But because time is of the essence in a lot of of these situations mm -hmm. perhaps you were a witness or you know some information at 2 38 this morning officers were dispatched to a vehicle versus pedestrian collision that occurred in the 100 block of west 16th street and the investigation shows a 60 year old male was crossing 16th street between first and second avenue when he was struck by a passenger car the vehicle did flee the scene eastbound on 16th Street, and the only description of that hit and run vehicle is it was a passenger car with LED lights. And the pedestrian was taken to YRMC and later flown to a Phoenix area hospital in serious condition. So we are enlisting help from the public. Maybe you saw something happen. Yeah. Please come forward, contact the Yuma Police Department at 373-4700 or you can remain anonymous. You can call 78 Crime, and it is truly an anonymous tip line. Exactly, and even if you think it's, you know, something very minimal, you were maybe you were, you know, even further away from the, you know, down the ways from the actual incident, but you witnessed a vehicle speeding um, that may have matched that description, or any little thing like that could be the little key that the police department needs to solve that. We're going to have Sergeant Franklin here. We're going to be talking about this and just overall traffic safety right now. The yes. little little ones, but K through six through yeah. elementary K through eight through elementary school district one headed back to school today. Yes, and I think this is pretty much everyone now we had crane desert view the high school district started last week yeah i think all of the littles are all to all in class in the the 2018 2019 school year i think has officially started for everybody but so. it's always good just to have that little reminder about school zones and yes. school buses and different things you know i traveled through a couple of school zones this morning and i have to say everything was nice knock on wood yes, i know it's on wood. i know it's the first day um but it was really nice we have a lot of parents out there because there's a lot of littles that are starting their first day of preschool and kindergarten and all that kind of stuff. I, I too walked Eli to school this morning um, and everybody was, I mean, courteous and polite and not 
and I've seen it. I've seen, you know, them being kind of aggressive with the uh, crossing guards and things right up on the the crosswalk and things. So, but today everything looks smooth. I did see a couple of our law enforcement officers patrolling the different areas. So, uh, thank you to them. But yeah, everything looked good out there, and hopefully we can keep it that way. <laughs> That's right. And prior to Sergeant Franklin coming in, Carrie Ring is going to be here from Heritage Festivals talking mm -hmm. about the Celebrate the Heat event yes. that is coming up on August 21st. And right now, I don't know that anyone's really celebrating anything. <laughs> no. We do have an excessive heat warning in effect today with temperatures around 113. Mm -hmm. That heat index value is a little bit higher. So just a few reminders about hydration. We cannot stress the importance of that enough. Stray, stay hydrated. Stay hydrated. It, you know, last night I had put Eli's water bottle halfway full with I, water in the freezer to freeze. And then this morning he goes, it's hard. I said, but by the time you get into your classroom this morning, it's already going to be melted because he filled it up with water. And uh, sure enough, when we got there, he started playing and it was already starting to melt. It's, it's very uh, sticky outside mm -hmm. today, to say the least. I remember doing that when Jace was in grade school. And now they have some of the, the insulated bottles, too, where they're not going to sweat as bad if yeah. you do freeze them. Yeah. But they recommended bringing them in a sock. You could put your water mm -hmm. bottle in a sock, too, to eliminate stuff in your backpack from getting wet. That's a good idea. His I wrapped in a couple of paper towels yes, because right. it was very sweaty. Um, but... A sock is a good idea. I never yeah. thought of them. I don't, although I don't think his sock would fit around. Well, you can use one of Kevin's socks. One of Dad's socks. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to. Might be a little bit more appropriate. I'm sure one of those is missing its pair anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have several birthdays here today on our list. And these are brought to you courtesy of Firehouse Subs and the Firehouse Public Safety Foundation, mm -hmm. an amazing organization who... They've granted over $35 million to first responders and our hometown heroes through mm -hmm. training, equipment, and other services. And it, it's such a blessing to partner with a great organization. And when you buy more subs, you help save lives. That's right. And we're going to have Anita, Miss Anita, draw last week's birthday winner. Lisa says, invest in a hydro flash. She got me one for my birthday. It is the best thing ever. Yeah, it's, show me which one is it's, the Hydro yeah, Flask. Hydro Flask. Flask. Flask, yeah, it's the green one that I carry. Um, I know I've been carrying my um, your Starbucks my Starbucks cups right now, but the, it's the green one, and it doesn't sweat, and my water stays, my ice will stay in there all day long. Awesome. Yeah. Well, of course, Amber from Culligan says drink more water. <laughs> yes, she does. And she uh, also says happy birthday to Zebediah Oland. Zeb was one of our former the, IT I guys. Was, I thought that was him. Well, happy birthday. He was the man for a number of oh, years. Oh, yeah. He's the one who built my computer. He <laughs> is. I was very, very he happy is with him. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. He is. Happy birthday, Zeb. All right. Last week's birthdays. Let me open the lid there. All right. Anita is going to select at random there we go. one lucky winner who will win a free medium sub, chips, drink, and a dessert from Firehouse Subs. A.B. Castro. A.B. Castro oh, is right. the winner. Was that one of our local monsters? He's one of our local monsters. He's a local right, DJ there you go. Uh, music producer in town, so I'll definitely get a hold of him. He's going to enjoy a free medium sub, chips, dessert, and a drink all from Firehouse Subs. Well, other birthdays on our list for today, in addition to Zeb. Mario Zapatelli. Mario oh, Mario's my, with Yuma Regional awesome. Medical Center. We oh, love okay. Mario. Mm -hmm. And he is celebrating today along with Jennifer Dixon Stakely, Jim Underhill, a longtime Yuma resident, Bernice Robertson, and Nadine Garul. Well, happy birthday to all of you. Any on your list? I have none on my what? list. I know, right? It, it's, it's an odd thing. I actually double checked to make sure. Is it a slow winter? It must have been. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have a birthday shout out you'd like to give, all you need to do is go to monstermediayuma.com. Click on the Today in Yuma tab. Scroll down just past the day show a little bit. You will see the Firehouse Sub logo, the Celebrate banner, and um, there's a little entry form. Just fill it out. It comes right to my inbox. Please give us 24 hours notice and make sure to put the actual date on there. And because one firehouse giveaway just isn't enough, we have another fun one that started today. I'm so, I'm so excited for this one. <laughs> and this, this is pretty cool. And we've already, um, I'm pretty sure the text line's on fire. <laughs> Based on the responses, but it's a it's a great 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 pot prize. This is a a big prize that can feed maybe a whole office or even your whole family dinner. For this one, you'll need to text the keyword firehouse. Okay. It's all one word, mm -hmm. and we will draw a winner on Friday at random from all of the entries. You can text as often as you like. Yes. And hang on, my page is still loading. It, it, do, 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 do. It's it's a sub platter. There we go. Yes, yeah, so it'll feed ten. And this is from Firehouse Subs on Fourth Avenue. Mm -hmm. It will feed ten and includes a gallon of tea or lemonade, mm -hmm. chips, and a cookie assortment. 
It's an $80 value, and we draw the winner on Friday. So get your entries in by Fridays. Again, text as often as you like. Please text responsibly. Never text and drive. No. For complete rules, visit monstermediayuma.com. Sounds good. Again, all you need to do is text the word firehouse, all one word. And you know, this is a giveaway that we're going to be doing once a week, so you have plenty of chances to win and enter as many times as you want. That's right. Well, today is one of my favorite days ever. I, I, I actually peeked at this one because it looks really good. National Root Beer Float Day. Yes, I can get behind this one. Also known as the Black Cow never heard that before. really no all right well the root beer flow got its start in colorado in a mining camp and frank j wisner of cripple creek colorado gets the credit for inventing the black cow way back in august of 1893 one night wisner owner of the cripple creek cow mountain gold mining company was starting out the well, he was staring out the window and thinking about the line of soda waters he was producing for the citizens of cripple creek and he came upon an idea the full moon that night shined on the snow-capped Cow Mountain and reminded him of a scoop of vanilla ice cream. He hurried back into his bar and scooped a spoonful of ice cream into the children's favorite flavored soda, Myers Avenue Red Root Beer, and after trying it, he liked it and served it the very next day, and believe it or not, it was an immediate hit. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> and Wisner named the new creation Black Cow Mountain, but the local children shortened the name to Black Cow. I, I like me a good root beer well, float. We were in a local retailer this weekend in the ice cream section, and the cutest little girl, she had the tiniest voice. Oh. She goes, Daddy, we should get some vanilla ice cream because we already got root beer and make root beer floats. Oh, how Aww. cute. She was just preparing for today. <laughs> how exciting. Now, this one we're all very appreciative of. I, I, I think that more than necessary <laughs> love today. It's National Fresh Breath Day. <laughs> Definitely. And it's observed annually on August 6th, and it's created to appreciate oral hygiene and its importance. Dentists and oral care professionals hail this day as a day dedicated to fighting bad breath. <laughs> I uh, That's definitely one I can... Uh, and get behind? <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> what I have I have sugar free gum. Would you like a mint? They did they did say on here chewed sugar free gum. My my dentist actually advises against that. I don't like it. I I prefer it sugar free gum. I, I, it's, it's not even the taste, but I don't like the texture. The yeah, the grittiness that yeah. some of the actual sugared gums That's have. True. And I, it, I like this one because as soon as I read it, I, I automatically did it? did it. So hopefully, I'm pretty sure our listeners will too. Is it like the one that says you can't lick your elbow and you do it? <laughs> no, I don't do that one. It's <laughs> National Wiggle Your Toes Day. Yeah, that's You're an easy it, one. You? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I, I looked ahead and I was like, oh, and I thought I, my toes were wiggling. So. <laughs> the power of persuasion. Exactly. And that was simply by reading it before I even said it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fresh root beer breath day. <laughs> That's, that's not a bad combination. That, that's better than uh, some of the other ones out there. <laughs> now, because we are speaking about the heat, just a reminder that there are multiple water, water and cooling stations mm -hmm. all around Yuma County, and they have some pet-friendly locations, too. If you go to our website, that's monstermediayuma.com, and you click on the Community Matters tab, I have the flyers there that give a breakdown of the water sites and the cooling sites. I love. I didn't even realize. I, I guess I didn't play, pay close attention to it, but I love that there there's some pet friendly ones too. That's true because uh, many of our homeless individuals in the Yuma community have dogs. Yeah. I yeah. don't know that I've seen any with cats, but dogs are more frequent. I think they're mm -hmm. probably a better companion for mm -hmm. someone who might be in that situation because a cat would be like, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm taking off. I need air conditioning. But yes, they do have pet friendly water site locations and cooling sites both. Mm -hmm. So they're making sure that they're included. And again, that's included on the map. Just look for the pet paw yeah. all around the various spots and that will help you find that location. Awesome. Again, we mentioned before, drink lots of water. You need mm -hmm. to hydrate well before going outside. And if you are working outdoors, try and wear light-colored long sleeve shirts mm -hmm. that will limit the exposure of the sun directly on your arms. Yeah, and, you know, again, we can't stress this enough. I, my husband works outside, and I'm lucky that he has, you know, they, they, they pay attention to each other because pay attention to... Um, the, for the signs of, of heat exhaustion in your coworkers, because sometimes they may not even realize it. On days like this, you, you can't have enough water. Even if you're just going to run errands, take water with you, because before you know it, you're going to be needing it. I did that yesterday. We ran an errand, and I took a bottle of water, and I told my husband, here, would you like to drink it by water? And the look he gave me was, what? Disbelief? You brought <laughs> well, water? Well, and you're, you actually drank it. Probably, even if you were just running a short errand, you probably drank it mm -hmm. while you were out, because it is, it's, it's, 
just that time of year. Yeah, it is. And you know what, though? Let me see. It's August 6th. About 10 more weeks of it. Ten. Ten more weeks and okay. we'll get into that cooler weather. Counting down. Lisa, cool, cool, we're counting oh. We're counting down to vacation. Lisa posted it because it is. It's, it's she, eight weeks away. We could do this. But uh, I'd rather count down to uh, Halloween where it's cooler. <laughs> we know that we'll drop below the uh, the triple digits oh, by Halloween in Yuma. Every year. That's a guarantee. <laughs> Little says all more proof that dogs are more, more loyal than cats. I, I'm not going to say they're more loyal. Cats are just a very independent creature. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I don't, they don't want to live outside. They don't want to be outside at this point. So, um, but yeah, I think cats are just as loyal as dogs. It just depends. It, it depends, and it's what love you give them too. Exactly. You get right back. They're a little more bossy and snooty, but that's just a cat. <laughs> yes. Mine took a nap with me yesterday. Oh, how so. sweet of her. All right. <laughs> is Carrie here? Is yes, yes, she is. Carrie. Carrie, come in. All right, we're going to go ahead and take our first break here on Today in Yuma on Z93 Outlaw Country. <laughs> MonsterMediaYuma.com and on Facebook Live. The show is brought to you by Classic Accounting. They have over 30 years of experience and knowledge, and you can trust them not only with your personal tax documentation, also your business payroll and monthly bookkeeping needs. Give them a call at 343-1040. And Sprague Sports, check out the Sprague's difference. Buy, sell, trade, or consign firearms with free expert appraisals. Sprague's offers local price matching and a lifetime warranty. You can find them on 32nd Street next to Lowe's. And if your home isn't comfortable, it might be time to call a professional. Call Quick Refrigeration at 782-3691. They've been heating and cooling the Yuma area since 1955. And days like this where we have a heat warning in effect, you don't want to be without a working air conditioner. Yes, and our friends over at Advocate Pest and Wildlife Specialists, they are locally owned and have been providing pest control services in the Yuma area for over 20 years. If you are not following Advocate Pest and Wildlife, on Facebook, it's probably a good idea that you go and like their page now. You already missed out on one awesome uh, flash sale that they had going on yesterday, but there's many more opportunities. All you need to do is go to Advocate Pest and Wildlife on Facebook and just kind of scroll down a little bit and you will see all the different ways you can save some money with Advocate Pest. It's Today in Yuma. We'll be back with Carrie Ring after the break to talk about celebrating the heat. Did you read Little's post? It yes. made me giggle. <laughs> Two out of three? Two out of, no, the other one. Oh, Jennifer oh. drinking water. Hi. Good to see Check you. Check it, make sure she's not dizzy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you. And Carrie's here on a Monday, not catch her Friday. I oh, know. Oh. Everything. Are, are we still in that? What were we in? Uh, Mercury retrograde. Yeah, Mercury was in what retrograde. <laughs> I missed something. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's wonky. It's not the way last it's supposed week, to be. Yeah, oh. last week everything was wonky. I gotcha. He said, Jennifer's drinking water. Maybe the weather has really made her lose her mind. Check and see if she's dizzy. <laughs> That's what you're saying. I, know, I meant to bring money too, because I just. I, you had a little jar. Bit of credit. Yeah, <laughs> you still have credit. You still have credit. Today is a perfect day to talk about celebrating the heat. <laughs> yes, we are crazy and we celebrate it. I and literally it's fun. felt like I was melting when I was walking Eli to school. I was like, oh. I could just feel my makeup. Right now. The, the other day, I needed to run down yes. to Maine. And you know, mm -hmm. City Hall is just, just right there. Right. I'm like, I'm not gonna drive my car there. I wish I had driven my car. <laughs> I was walking back. Well, and did it was you just have like a blazer going, on? Uh, well, well, you know, yes, because it gets cold inside. Yeah. Like, it's cold in here right now. <laughs> and I agree. So I'm walking back, and I was like, oh, <laughs> like, this is terrible. <laughs> and my husband, of course, is like, I don't want to hear it. Like, you know, he flies a helicopter in this heat. It's so like... Amber says me. good morning. Right. Amber Thornton <laughs> says hi, Carrie. Hi, and so good does morning. Jessica. How do you say your last name? Hauserman. Hauserman. Oh, she's our um, health coach. Oh, well, she's so oh nice. And everything is wonky, the unofficial slogan of 2018. <laughs> <laughs> we just in, uh, finished doing a uh, what are you drinking challenge. Uh -huh. So to uh, pay yeah. attention to how many bo drinks, uh, bottles of water you drink every day, I won a prize. <gasps> I was like one of the lowest winning people, but I kept track of it and I won a water bottle that like LED lights. Oh, oh so fun. Good for you. <laughs> See, I remember when I was pregnant with Jace, they said you normally should drink half a gallon a day, but when you're pregnant and in the summertime, you should drink a gallon. So I was trying to cram it all in by noon. <laughs> and it was making me so sick. Oh, yeah, like, no, 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 no
Oh. Yeah, no. Okay, I won't even make any other comments. It's a family show. Good. Okay, good. Okay. No, I'm just stopping right there. Good job, <laughs> Carrie. Woohoo, it's what Amber said. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> yep. Here we go. Oh, it's Monday. <laughs> Welcome back to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. We have Carrie Ring with us from the City of Yuma Heritage Festivals, and we are going to talk about celebrating the heat. Yes, good morning. Good I'm so morning. excited to be here on a Monday morning. I was going to say, it must be a little weird for you not being here on Catcher Friday. It's okay. I got my kids up early for school. They were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, you were, you were on top of it, because you were the first back-to-school post I've seen this morning. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Oh. Well, that's because my mom first. was there to help me too. <laughs> <laughs> so my mom took the kids to school on their first day. How awesome is that? Yeah. Now you have grade schoolers and middle schoolers. Yeah, well, junior high and then two elementary. Okay. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I had to think about that. Eighth, eighth grade? No, he's in seventh, seventh grade. Seventh seventh grade. So, yeah, a okay. fifth grader and a second grader. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So okay. they all wore shorts to school because it's warm. Outside. In January, they will be wearing shorts and jackets. <laughs> yeah, that's what they all do. <laughs> Actually, that's my right. son was like, Mom, I need to get a hoodie. The classrooms are so cold. And I'm like, it's hot. Oh, oh don't. Yep. I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, it's, but it's true. They, I keep a, a sweater yep. here yeah. and in production and I in the office. Little so. says, is heat okay to say or is that like a nickel? <laughs> I don't know. You can say heat. You can say heat. Sell it. Well, I have to say it. It's in the title of the event. Yes, it's heat is okay. We we're going to talk about how, how we're going to celebrate the heat. We've only banned the three-letter word, not yeah. the four-letter word. Wonderful. Well, I'm wondering how she's going to work around that, because I know there's a car show that's involved in there, too. It um, is, and it's it's the blank summer nights car show in China. <laughs> <laughs> Friday summer nights? The, the humid summer nights? The, I don't... Um, the dark mm, summer nights? The warm summer <laughs> nights. <laughs> <laughs> I don't right. think Chief would like that. Like, <laughs> can't change the name we'll, of we'll the We'll pass on that one for now, but... We are talking Celebrate the Heat because we are going to be celebrating the heat on downtown Main Street. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited because, you know, I'm new to helping organize these ones from downtown. Yeah. So I went over, I went from the Civic Center hosting the big events, and now I'm focusing on the downtown festivals. Mm -hmm. And so I'm super excited. I got my hands in on this one. And, you know, we're bringing the fire department back, and they're going to be lightly misting the children <laughs> with the hose. And uh -huh. that's what we have to say. Uh, lightly <laughs> misting, <laughs> dousing people down. And so the fire department will be out there. We have an ice garden ready rents is bringing out 900 pounds of ice oh, wow so um you know it's going to be fantastic we'll have water jumpers free face painting uh free watermelon slices um from bare naked soap co Ooh. we really appreciate them doing that for us obviously we'll have the food vendors out there doing the ice cold treats and and drinks and we have a beer garden located in front of the yuma art center so we've got something for everybody i'm super excited about the band we're bringing they're from phoenix they're called the Muno Bars 24 Karat Dance Band. Ooh. So they are a tribute band to mm -hmm. Bruno Mars and um, they bring the energy. Um, I saw a couple of posts where they did a concert in Awatuki in at a bar and they just had everybody up and going and it's going to be fantastic. So I'm excited about that. Not only do we have all that going downtown on, in the 100 and 200 block, but in the 300 block we have the car show in Cheyenne that's um, by the Yuma Firefighters Association, United Yuma Firefighters Association. So they have more than like 80 cars, classic cars, And they've done cars. that before, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, we've yeah. partnered with this one for quite a few years now. So that's an awesome element to have. And then if we couldn't do even more, there's a reggae concert oh happening goodness. inside the Yuma Art Center that same night. So super excited about all the things we have coming on now the, the 17th for the reggae concert it, will there be a cost for that yeah so i believe tickets are ten dollars right now actually i have the flyer up right now uh general admission is ten dollars and twenty dollars for vip okay um so it's uh live uh, this gentleman is live from jamaica first time he's been in yuma first time he's playing in the united states why bad i'm sorry i don't know if that's actually how you say his name but um he is with uproot and then they have so, some other band members tough like iron maple street and papa ranger from 12 tribe sound so 
It's going to be a night. Uh, Teresa's our local reggae consultant. Oh, yeah. You got it. Did yeah. I say all those yeah, right? Those, okay. That's good. That's good. <laughs> it, it sounds like it's going to be a good time. And for just $10, I mean, why not get out of the heat once just you've enjoyed minute. all yeah. of the festivities? And you can go, because that will probably go on, I'm assuming, a little bit later. Yeah. So they're going to open the doors for that one at 5 p.m. Okay. So 5 p.m. to midnight, they'll be inside there. The Celebrate the Heat is from 6 to 10 p.m., but we all know it goes. I mean, the, the, the longer the vendors are out there, they're usually out there till 11 or 12 anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, it'll be a good night. And if people want to come out and check out the Muno Bars 24 Care Dance Band, yeah, there's they're no gonna, cost for that. It's outside. Yeah, that's a free concert outside, um, right in the center where the where the which fountain is. Which, which water sir, fountain? The, fountain? the center, the center fountain. fountain the, near we set the stage right in front naked? of that. Okay. Yep, right in front of that. Oh, okay. And perfect. they'll go on probably around 8:30, I think. Yeah. All right. Sounds like a good time. Again. At, you can say what kind of car show it is. We're it's the it. hot summer nights. I don't. Show I don't want. Shine. I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> mess that up for them at all. Here, you know, got to give them the right. Zoom in on the picture. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> That's where Facebook Live comes in play. It's, it's okay. Because they have a credit. Heat it's the time of we'll we'll show. Sure. Yes, we will allow. And you know, you mentioned that the fire fi uh, uh, fire department will be there, lightly misting yes. the, the kids and things. <laughs> Down by my house, we drove past, I think it was last week or maybe the week before, and they were doing an event for one of the churches down there, and they were lightly misting <laughs> the kids. I just wanted to turn around and go get in that because yeah. of this weather. And it's open for everybody. Yeah. I mean, I'll be over there. I'm going to make a, like, throne for, of ice queen uh, throne for me to sit in all day and just let my kids run wild. It's going to be great. We do ask that the kids wear shoes. So if they've got some water shoes water or just shoes, uh -huh. old tennis shoes that you don't mind them, because the pavement will still be pretty warm. warm. Yes, it will. So yeah. we ask everybody to keep your shoes on, and that's for safety, too. It might get a little slippery. Uh, we are planning some fun little surprises for our kid zone, kid area this year. So um, come on out and have a good time with us. All right. And your ice throne will still have some type of pad on it so you're not sitting right on the ice, correct? No. You, you have to, to because you, you're going to get numb. <laughs> you are. That's the point. Yeah. No, <laughs> frostbite. no frostbite. I don't think you can get frostbite. I think it'll temperature. melt too soon. I'm, I'm speaking to that because it, it was not anywhere in our community, but years ago there was a radio contest, and it may have been when one of the fruity new beverages came out. They had people sit in a kid's pool full of ice oh. with these bottles for hours, oh. and they broke. The, the bottles broke, and they were so numb they couldn't feel oh, that no. they had severe cuts too oh wow. well, so this we're, yes. we're gonna go the safety yeah you're way. gonna put a cup yeah. uh, um some type of padding on there so you're not sitting right on the ice but see that's why we have she's uh, all sure i am <laughs> that's why we have uh lightly misting yes. and other things too <laughs> because people have learned from experience from okay. previous situations i got you that will right. not be happening there you go no. <laughs> safety the, first safety. the ice will yes. melt with pd's here what am i supposed yes. to say <laughs> <laughs> in here to the studio. <laughs> now, it, it's all about kind of recognizing the, the tough summers that we endure, but again, we make it through the summer, so we have earned our winters. I'm wondering yes. if, you, did you say when this was? I don't remember you saying when it was. Yo, so it's on uh, August 17th, the uh, Friday. Okay. So I gave yeah. the wrong date. I think I gave a date from two years ago. Oh, no, August, I'm so August sorry. August 17th. Yeah, August 17th. Starts okay. at 6 p.m. down on uh, the 100, 200, and 300 block of Main Street. You can't miss it if you, you head down that way. can't miss it. And plenty, I plenty suggest... of parking on the back sides of the buildings. Right, but I still think that they have the... Is it maiden? Is it maiden, maiden that's uh, under construction? Uh, under construction, but we, they do have walkways from the parking lots now to Main Street. So okay. parking shouldn't be too terrible. And, and yeah. there, there is plenty of parking yeah. down yeah. there, too. Everyone, well, obviously for events like this, they close off the front, but even on a normal basis, you know, you might have to walk back a little bit. Back the Art Center, back over in City Hall's parking lot, there's plenty yeah. of parking. Just come on down and help celebrate the heat. Yeah, if I may, real quick, yes. two seconds, I want to uh, do a couple special shout-outs to our title sponsors, so Ready Ice, Bare Naked Soap Co., Yumo's Affordable Rentals, Waycog, Lutz Casino, and Historic Coronado Motor Hotel. All right. Fantastic. I always like to shout them. out to those. Yeah, because yeah. you can't do it without your partners. That's right. <laughs> All right. It's Today in Yuma on Z93 Outlaw Country. And don't forget, you can always watch us on Facebook Live. It's time to take our Lotus Day Spa and Salon Selfie with Carrie out in the courtyard. Then we're going to come back and talk law enforcement with Sergeant Lori Franklin on Today in Yuma. We'll be back after the break. The show is brought to you by Classic Accounting. They have over 30 years of experience and knowledge, and you can trust Classic Accounting with your business payroll and your monthly bookkeeping needs. Just give Dave and his crew a call today at 343-1040. 
and Sprague Sports visit their partner location, Truckmates. You was home for 3M window tint. 3M window tinting, protect your car's interior, and keep cooler while driving around this summer. You can find them on 32nd Street next to Lowe's. And from repairs and maintenance to premium system installations, Quick Refrigeration brings you indoor comfort expertise that keeps you comfortable and productive no matter the weather. But very important during these days like today when we have an excessive heat warning in effect, visit them online at getcoldquick.com. And our friends over at Advocate Pest and Wildlife Specialist. You know, I was mentioning some special discounts by going to their Facebook page. You can receive $30 off by going to their Facebook page. You can follow them on Instagram and Twitter for an additional $10 off. You know, there's just lots of opportunities to save with a great, great company, Advocate Pest and Wildlife Specialist. You can always give them a call at 928-343-9149. But again, go like them on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and you can receive some special deals. It's today in Yuma. We'll be back after the break. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Good morning. Welcome back. Yay. <laughs> See you guys later, okay? Uh, picture. Oh, yeah, I know. That's right. I was going that way. <laughs> Yes, retrograde. Mercury and yeah. retrograde. Yeah. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Look, look it up. Look, crazy. It up. look it up. Super I got crazy. Okay. It's an actual thing. I didn't know that until Anita started talking <laughs> about it. All right, here we go. Smile. We got the wind in our head. I know. Going the right way. Hey, it's a breeze. It is. A breeze. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll we'll take it. it. It's, it's your hair dryer on low. On low. On low. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Kind of what it feels like. Yeah, it's the hair dryer on. It well. does feel chilly in here now, but I love it. Wow, welcome home. Yeah. All the blue and pink you all coordinate. Not on purpose. <laughs> Just kind of happens that way. Yeah. How was the weather where you were at? You know, it's funny because my Georgia? yeah, because my son was like, "Oh my God, Mom, it's hot." I'm like, "What? Nineties?" <laughs> and he said, oh, but it's humid. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it may, I think one day it hit like 95. But we're getting more and more humid here. So yeah. I, I was like, this is nothing. <laughs> this, this is nothing. Yeah, I'll it was. The weather was beautiful. It rained the first night I got there, and it rained when we were on our way back to the airport. Aww. Other than that, it was beautiful weather. Is, is baby two now? Uh, he turned one in April. Just one? I'm yeah, just he's just no, but he is just so much Aww. fun. He then it gets harder to leave each time. <laughs> just it was, it's horrible. horrible. I know. <laughs> I bought him one of those plastic baby Adirondack or little guy Adirondack chairs, <laughs> right? And he carries it all over. <laughs> and then he he like steps up into it, and then he squats down and he turns around to sit in it. <laughs> and I'm like, Honey, oh, no, there's no, no, go ahead. You just keep going. You just do what <laughs> do you what need to do. do. And then he, he does this thing where he holds his hands out like this. And I'm like, oh, baby, what do you want? We you want to go to Walmart? Do you want any, huh, anything? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to buy you let's whatever go. you want. Come on, let's go. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad there's not a toy Will you be my grandma? I would, yeah, I would just, I'd be broke. I would be broke right now. <laughs> That's what my mom is with my son. She gets them usually on Thursdays. And now he started school, but even throughout the summer, she's like, okay, well, where do you want to go? You go they go to Barnes & Noble, because there's a toy section at Barnes & Noble. Oh, yeah. They used to go to Hastings. He used to call it the bookstore, because they have books, but he went straight to the toy section. <laughs> and he was telling us yesterday, I wish Toys R Us was still open, because that was my favorite place that Anna took me. I'm like, yeah, because you got a toy every Thursday. You know? <laughs> He's the only grandchild. Oh, he had me. He led me into the kitchen. I went, oh, goldfish? You want goldfish? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we ready? Yep. Welcome back to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. We are back now on Z93 and Outlaw Country and Facebook Live. We want to thank Anita for running the camera for us. And our next guest is Sergeant Lori Franklin with the Yuma Police Department. Good morning. Glad to have you back. Yeah. Those just watching on Facebook Live got to hear a little bit of your vacation <laughs> adventures with your precious grandson. Oh, grandson, he is so cute. He is so cute. Well, back to the grind. 
I, and I, yeah. I, and I, you literally, <laughs> you know what? You uh, you had a brief little reprieve, and I don't even know that I gave you any real vacation time. You know, I, I, I shouldn't have giggled so much while I was gone watching the stuff come up. I was like, <laughs> poor Janet. Well. But yeah, I, no, I shouldn't have giggled. Okay, it, that, that leads us into these recaps you've been creating for the Yuma Police Department's Facebook page. The weekly recaps. They, the week in review. People, yes. people love them. And you know what? And, and I like that they're realizing the fact that, yes, there's some serious stuff taking place place but we have some not super duper intelligent criminals <laughs> that are committing some of these crimes too and you're able to kind of portray some of the stuff in a more comedic way shed a little light on the situation and it, it there have been some some very tragic situations here in our community as of late there and sometimes we need a little levity we have to just add some humor into stuff and we love how you are writing these <laughs> recaps, especially the one from this past week because yeah. it covered the two weeks while you were gone. Yeah, and there were quite a few. And there wasn't there place. wasn't enough paper, and I don't want to write so much that people get bored with it. So. Oh no, you could have kept going. So you know, I mean, I had to because I, I was like, oh, what do I pick? Oh, that's oh, oh, that's no, oh, that one's. So you know, it was jumping back and forth and trying to to pick the right ones to put in there. But well, and I love that you do that too because it's a way for you to, like Jennifer said, make light of the situation. You guys see some really horrible things daily, and I couldn't imagine having trying to deal with that you know mentally but things like this are a way for you to kind of let it out a little bit keep it lighthearted, but still informing the community of what exactly was going on <laughs> okay little just says in the criminal justice system not every criminal is working with all the crayons and the carton these are their stories <laughs> <laughs> i like <Yep>. that one <laughs> yeah. you forgot the dun 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 well no yeah. he well yeah he added that it's, I it's like it. a few can shy of a case i'm telling you <laughs> it, but you know it's it because you just don't understand that this really happens, and, mm -hmm. and when you sit when you sit there and say you just can't make this up, you can't. I mean, this stuff really happens, and I read this and I'm like, I'm not on patrol anymore, so I'm not out there dealing with this day to day. So you know, when I, I read the arrest reports and the recaps and stuff, and I come across some of this, and I'm like, oh, and it reminds me of things that I you know have run into you know my days past. And I'm like, it still goes, you know? Well, there's the one, even when I got the press release, I read it to myself, and then I read it out loud. And I asked Teresa, did that just not make any sense to you? And it was the suspect, victim, suspect, the... What? The, you know? <laughs> <dog door. laughs> I'm like, who's on first? What's on second? I, You know, I write these press releases, and I have to try to... I mean, 20 years in the military and 15 years on this job, you know, I my brain works in that military cop mode. So, you know, I try to make it so that citizens who don't speak our jargon can actually, you know, understand, understand it. it. Yeah. But it's hard sometimes to put it in. That's why when I can write these the week in review, I, I mean, that's my. We see your list. personality. I know. Somebody, t <laughs> somebody sent me a, a text message saying, oh, I love your week in reviews. I'm like, how do you know I'm doing it? Because it's just like you talk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it's you all the way. Because other people, even I copied and shared it, and I said, I'm, you know, sharing the recap provided by the police department. And people referenced it in there. Oh, I, Lori's hilarious. And I'm like, <laughs> I didn't say she wrote it. I didn't reference that. It wasn't well, on the and somebody page. said that, you know, is, is the person who writes these a secret? I'm like, well, no, not at all. It just, I, I mean, I'm so used to signing my name to press releases. This was just something fun. I just never put a name to it. But it was never a secretive thing. And then it, that just kind of became a giggle moment for me. But it is, it is fun. But, but that one in particular, it's like, yeah, you kind of start out kind of being a victim. But then you did all this stuff and you know wow and this stuff you just can't make up and this stuff really happens the, the funny i think the funniest part of that one this past well, the, uh, and the last one you did this friday was uh if you can fit in the doggy door that means there's probably a right? rather large dog in that whole sense has <laughs> got to kick in somewhere there's no, not a chihuahua no, that none. needs that big door you know <laughs> i just wow and then yeah. and then you know i wanted to because uh, with school safety coming up yeah. so i wanted to put a little blurb in there about school safety and you know, the, these poor traffic people that go out there to stop traffic, you know, so the kids can cross Probably safely. Cars, yeah. I mean, I wasn't kidding. I mean, they're, they're, they're like, you know, the matador out there trying to dodge cars. And, you know, they have a job to do and these kids need to get to school safely. And those traffic guards are out there to stop the traffic so that the kids can cross and make it all the way across. And there are cars that will try to fly through at the last minute, you know, to not get caught. 
and you know you're putting lives in danger. It's not. It's not a yellow light though. It's a crosswalk no, no, with not. children in it. And yellow doesn't mean go very fast. No, it doesn't. Right? Or, you know, I mean, Hello. it's, it's, not, it's <laughs> not like that. And then, but then you see these people, and you see it on the highway too, because there's a construction on a highway, and as soon as they get past that last no. cone, and it's like. Phew, he beeps it bang, you know, and yeah. they're, they're out trying oh, to catch right back we're up. See, Teresa saw six people in a row making a legal left-hand turn on B last week because this is an entire construction in, zone. In, yeah. in the turning lane that is actually meant to turn, for you to get in to turn left onto 16th, they were going the opposite direction <laughs> to turn left into the Food City parking lot area. And I'm like, oh my gosh, people, oh my gosh. And luckily, you know, most uh, and I have to say, you know, most people do the, the speed limit, the 25 right now, because it is one lane each way, but they just don't want to go up that little extra two right. minutes to make that turn where they can actually do it legally. They want to turn in the middle of the, the road right there. It, it, it boggles your mind. It does. Well, and they post signs because this is why I specifically remember fines and fines are doubled in construction zones. And the fines generally aren't cheap as it is, and you double yeah. that, and then you see the people usually complaining on social media, how dare that police officer, and maybe a couple expletives popped in here and there, pull me over, and it's going to cost me $417. You should have thought about that before you broke the law. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, yeah. We, we can see it. You can't. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. Oh, but. You know, but it, it's, like, I, and I've said it before, I mean, I could be in a marked patrol car going 35 on 4th Avenue, and people think nothing to even pass a marked patrol car going 40 because today's times it is in their minds it's become acceptable five miles over the, yeah it's only five miles over the speed limit so is it acceptable to break into your car and only take ten dollars no nope. is it acceptable to go into walmart and only shoplift a pair of socks i mean where do we put a limit on this mm -hmm. oh it's, it's okay it's only five over the but speed you limit you see the five and then that creeps up well it's seven it, well it, now it's it started five, to creep five up. is okay then seven's no big deal it's i'm not worth right. their time to stop they don't want to do the paperwork right. and then you hear all this stuff about quotas oh, there, is, there no, are no there quotas is no such trust thing. me not, I, don't know, I don't know any offer the officer that wants to sit and do not additional here. paperwork there, there is there is no quotas we do not get rich off of tickets that we write five dollars out of every ticket goes into a safety fund for the pd which we can only use on like helmets, vests, um, safety equipment like that. It doesn't go to our salaries. And then in the in city municipal core, every ticket that we write, over 50% of that fine and money goes to the state. Wow. Less than 50% of it stays here in Yuma. So we're not out doing this, you know, just to get rich. We're not going to get rich. And I've had people say, oh, you know, you don't know how many people you're putting in a poor house or you haven't saved any lives writing these tickets. Well, how do you know that? Mm -hmm. You know, okay. how do you know that? Right. And how many accidents have you been to where you've seen that dead body laying in that car, that mangled body that's in the car? You know, the average person is, they're saved from that. Mm -hmm. Unless you happen to pull up on that accident right then and there. And, and I hope, you know, somebody's going to run up and try to render first aid to that person. But unless you're that person that hits those, you don't see that every day. You know, we do, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's not just accidents. Um, you know, deceased people in general, um, people who are badly hurt or beaten, child abuse, child sex crimes. Our officers deal with a lot of this stuff on a daily basis, mm -hmm. and it can take a toll. So, yeah, those funny stories that I put out there, those are the ones that I guess kind of bring us back to separate this you, from you this. have to be able to to create the the, right. the differentiation between that and i think it's probably a good therapy for you right and and i'm not going to write about that stuff mm -hmm. that stuff is just it's not something that you can make the public yeah. yeah they don't i mean i do try to put a serious story in there every now and then um and gosh i did the one time the 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 young kid with the meth and I think that was too much of a throat punch, I think, sometimes, what? you know, putting the reality it, of it out there. I was going to say, but, but it is the reality. It is reality. Um, someone said, wow, someone needs some creamer for this coffee because it just got way too dark. <laughs> <laughs> but we're just, we're showing you an example. Right. Of but it's, but I, I try to share the fun stuff. Right. But, but the bad stuff does happen. But um, 
we've been seeing a lot of bad things lately. We and we do, and we do. It just it's kind of like a nonstop thing. And well, we and and you came back to this from vacation too. I did. And I'm I like, did. Oh my uh, goodness. Uh, I, so I came back Wednesday morning to the drive-by shooting, and then Wednesday night we had the uh, the other shooting, and then it just I mean it just keeps rolling in, and I'm just like holy cow. You know, is this something that you see as a rise in you, or is it just seem like it to us because now we're in the age of social social media and we get all of that news right in front of us. I can, I can tell you social media brings out a lot of it. Mm -hmm. There's things that, we, that we would never do press releases on mm -hmm. or doesn't meet that, that level for a well, press release. One that, of the, the situations, and I will often reach out, and I, we mentioned on Friday morning that we have a lot of eyes and ears in the community. Mm -hmm. We obviously can't be everywhere all the time and different people reach out and let me know about things, but the perception is sometimes a little different than what the police department may see. Like. OMG, Jennifer, I just saw the entire police department going lights and sirens down 4th Avenue. I said, well, how many did you see? There were six. A few more than six in our whole department, but some of the calls, if officers don't know what they're getting into, it warrants a larger response. Mm -hmm. That may change, but we've had some very unfortunate situations involving suicide. Those generally do not warrant a press release being no, issued. And, and we don't. We don't put a press release out reference that. There's... I mean, if we if we have a, a man down call, and it could be somebody tripped and, you know, fell and bumped their head and now they're bleeding, or it could be even worse than that. But there's certain things that we as officers will run lights and sirens to. And just because we're running lights and sirens to something, we're doing it because we're not sure what we're going to get when we get there. Right. Now, um, if there's a burglary in progress, yeah, we're going to run lights and sirens. Um, but just because we and we get there and maybe it really wasn't that maybe it was somebody who locked their keys in their car and they're trying to get into their own car so just because we're running lights and sirens doesn't mean it's always a big huge thing but sometimes it is but i think the general public needs to understand that um your curiosity i get it but we may not be able to get the information out to you right away because i'm not going to bother those officers right. and the sergeant and lieutenant that are handling that call to try to get you information right now because they've got bigger things to do. And that's why there, there's kind of a chain of how Lori and I generally interact. And mm -hmm. the same thing goes with Alfonso from the Yuma County Sheriff's Office. If I know there's a large situation going on, they have individuals on scene and you want them to focus on that task at hand. Yes. And the last thing I want them to do is take away those efforts and say, okay, hang on, let me put something together. So I'll reach out to Lori and see if I can get the gist of whatever the situation might be. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for specifics. I'm looking to tell people, you know, avoid this stretch of road to this stretch of road. Let the right. police officers do, or the deputies do their jobs. And that's kind of how we do that. So some people like to hurry and post videos and and oh. other things like that or whatever they think is going on but it might not often be the case and it just it's kind of like a bad game of telephone and it's misinformation so I'd rather provide a little information and let that continually grow until we have legitimate information from a law enforcement right. agency. And, and another thing that comes up is if we do have have somebody that has lost their life um, I generally will not release the name for at least 24 hours, mm -hmm. at least. And that's because I understand that there are big families, wide extended families around here, and I want to try to give as much time as I can for everybody to inform relatives yeah. or anything like that before seeing it on social media, because that is not the way to be informed yeah. that a good friend or relative you know, has passed. But you know, it, it's a matter of public record, and you know sometimes you have to release this stuff. But, but I do wait, and I try to wait. But then you see other people post it on social media, and then it's like, well, it's already out here. Can you confirm this name? Or, I'm not going to confirm it right now. I'm going to stick to my guns, right. and I'm going to wait because it's not me putting it out. If somebody else decides they want to share that, that's up to them. And some situations, because minors generally aren't involved in releases. People, if it's some type of tragedy, they passed away, they'll set up GoFundMe accounts right. or things to help with medical expenses. And that information is being shared by external sources too, and right. multiple people get tagged in it. And, so, and, and they do, and, and that's up to the family, but again, 
for me in my position, I'm going to wait. I'm right. going to wait, and then I will I will release the information. Well, and I think one of the other things that people forget too, you know, they they want that information, that immediacy, because with social media we have that immediacy. So a lot of people want that that information as soon as possible, but they forget it's an active investigation. What right. if you're trying to discreetly go after a suspect? Exactly. And they're well, there's a bunch of cops over here. What's going on? We're not going to post it on social media because we don't want that person to know that we're coming after them. Right. You know, they forget that sometimes. It, it is an active investigation most cases, and there's things that they don't necessarily want the public to know. Oh, I like the post. I just saw three undercovers in this area. <laughs> Well, there, there you go. They're there not you go. undercover anymore. So, so much for uh, falling under the veil yeah, of secrecy. It, 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 it is. It is what it is. It's and our world today. It, it, it is. is. It is our world today. And you know, social media it, it can help. It helps us a lot when we release pictures of people and hey, we're looking for this and hey, we're looking for that. Um, and but we try everything within our department to try, hey, you know, any officers, do you know this person? Do you know this person? We're going to try that first before we put it out because the, the surprise factor, you know, always helps and not giving somebody the ability to run away. Um, because you have a victim out there who needs justice and, you know, you get the information out there and now it spreads to the suspect and they're gone and we can't get them. Well, now there is no, there's, there's no justice for this, for the victim. So, right. Well, we wanted to talk to you about a variety of things, and we have indeed done that. We, <laughs> want to, we now want to really address those school zones and bus buses. We'll take, you want to take a break yeah. first? Can you stick around? Yeah. About 10 more minutes? Yeah. Okay, we're going to keep you here then. Okay. We're not holding you against your will, are we? <laughs> Don't send anyone else. I'm sure she'd rather be here right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's Today in Yuma with Jennifer and Teresa. We'll be back after the break on Z93, Outlaw Country, and Facebook Live. That way we can get this out of the way. We don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> right. Now we're like, oh my gosh, we're running well on time. We just kind of went. <laughs> <laughs> That's how no we do. tangents here at all. <laughs> Squirrel. Well, there's so many. There's so many. There's so many things that we see on a day-to-day -day basis, and we know you can't comment on them either. But, but you know, I normally don't have to. I mean, yeah. there, there's some so things. Sometimes get, there's, uh, things just work. There's things you get posted. And I take a deep breath. <laughs> and someone else is coming and comment. And then I wait, and then somebody else will come back and just just have at and. I, Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I <laughs> like that part. I understand completely. It's, it's, uh, it's just one of those things. You just, I just, sometimes, sometimes I just, I have to slide the phone away. I have to move it away. Well, because I have to maintain a modicum of composure on many occasions. So I'm thinking, well, I'm taking a deep breath. Someone else will kind of slide on and say, oh, uh-uh-uh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, and, okay. and it happens. It happens a lot. And, but, you know, you're, you're always going to have the, the negative people. And, that you know, everybody has a right to their opinion. Yes. That is absolutely. Everyone right. serves a purpose, whether right. we think it or not. And sometimes it might be to make our skin a little thicker. Right. It might be to make people try and educate themselves a little better about different things. I, I can. I mean, I can honestly say because I mean, I didn't come into this job till later on, and I can honestly say, you know, I was like, well, how come? Well, how come? Well, how come? But once you get into this job, then you understand, and it makes sense. You mean from a civilian perspective? From, why, why do they do that? Right, from the civilian to the uh, to the law enforcement side, you have to, and mm -hmm. it's you know, especially the well, how come they're speeding? Well, because there's certain things we can't run code to. Right. But there are maybe a verbal domestic that could go physical at any moment. So yeah, we're going to go a little faster because if we can stop that from right. getting that far, right. again, de escalate the situation. Time is of the right. essence in these situations. So and it, so once you understand that, it makes perfect sense. When we do the citizens academies mm -hmm. and they come in, and you know, one of the questions that they'll ask is is about that. And when they get done with that, now it's a twelve week thing because there's just so much information. But when they get done with it, they're just like, wow, you know, now they get it and they understand. And you, you're never going to make everybody no, understand, no, and you're no. never going to make everybody happy. But mm -hmm. you can't make everyone care. That's just right. life, well, life in general. Well, and that's it too. I mean, so you, you just you do the best you can. Yeah. And, you know, you take it. You, I got thick skin. You, you say whatever you want to say. You know, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. You keep on keeping on. I'm right? telling you, I just I just made more work for myself with that weekend review. <laughs> See. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, we understand. <laughs> we do an hour. Yeah, but now you can't <laughs> not do it. I know. I was like, well, it was kind of funny because when I put, well, there won't be one next week because I'm going to be out of town. And it's like, have a nice vacation. I never said I was on vacation. <laughs> I was. But, yeah. <laughs> but it well, was, you were at training. Not the you weren't on vacation for the entire time. You aren't we're on training. No, I was on vacation. I thought you were in training like a Friday or a Monday. Well, block training here at the okay. state. Oh yeah. Here okay. at the PD I was in training for two days. But then the end of the month, um, the end of August I go to Florida for training. Okay. Oh cool. For about four days. That's hurricane season, isn't it? It is. Yes. It is. How exciting. I know. No. Oh, <laughs> I, love it. I love the East Coast, so I'm good. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? Ready? Welcome back to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. Good morning, Cutter. He just popped in on Facebook Live. And Vanessa and all the other people watching on Facebook Live right now. <laughs> just a reminder, it's another way where you can follow along with the show. Even if we're off air at that mm -hmm. point, you can comment. And often our guests, like right now we have Sergeant Lori Franklin. People that comment, uh, we'll tag her in it. So if there's a question we can't answer, she can possibly try and answer. That's right. And now we're going to talk about those school zones and school buses and a few things like that that people may deem as inconvenient during their travel schedule <laughs> but it's important to get our you know children safely across the street and to school safely absolutely you know it's if the school zones go down to a I think a, a very low speed limit but that's for the safety of our kids it gives you ample time to stop because kids do things that kids do mm -hmm. and sometimes they may run out into the street because they're not thinking so when you're at that, you know, 15, 20, 25 mile or speed limit, it's it allows you to brake faster for the unexpected to come out into the road. But we do we do have the the road guards out there and these people are trying to help your kids get across the the street into school. So, you know, please watch when they step out in there, just stop, you know, give them that couple minutes, let the kids cross and then you can go again at a moderate pace. And e even if a child is stepping out from behind a car and it's not a crosswalk. crosswalk. Absolutely. Absolutely. Pedestrians That's why I say you need to be at a slow enough speed that you can slam on those brakes that you can stop in time. And there's a lot of kids. There's a lot of kids that walk to school uh, in this town. And, and if you're going to walk to school, walk to school with a buddy. Try not to walk to school by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, always have somebody with you. And Stay to main streets. Try not to cut through alleys and cut through back streets. Stay to the main streets. If somebody approaches you that you don't know, do not approach them. You know, it, it's okay. It's not rude to say, I can't talk to you. Don't talk to them. Strangers, stay away from. Get to school, get home. If something happens, tell your teacher right away when you get to school. Tell the teacher, the school resource officer, tell an adult. Don't wait until after school when you get home and tell your parents. Tell them right away so hopefully that we can get out there and maybe find a person that may be doing something that is suspicious. Um, we do get them all the time, the suspicious incidences, and you know our officers are going to go out. They're going to try to find a vehicle, um, whatever happened, to try to figure out what's going on. But like I said, always, always walk with other kids. Uh, the more of you that you can walk together, the better, the safer it is. Stick to, to crosswalks. Don't just dart and run out in front of the streets. Um, if you're following behind a school bus, that school bus is going to stop. It's going to put that stop sign out there. It is illegal and it's a pretty good fine if you pass that school bus with that stop sign out coming either direction. Kids are going to cross in front of that bus and go across the street. So it's, it's just that time of the year. It's nothing new. It happens every year when school's in session, speed limits are down. Twice during that day, there's going to be a large group of kids walking to and from home to school. So. If you find that you get stuck behind those buses on a frequent basis, leave earlier. Oh, or that, take that a different take route. Take an alternative route. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we all we all have to we we all have to adjust our schedules. I mean, we're Yuma, Arizona. We have winter visitors. You know, we have to adjust ourselves <laughs> a couple times. Yeah. First, we adjust ourselves for school coming into session. Then we adjust ourselves for more traffic when the winter visitors get here. And then our ag traffic. And and then you got the ag traffic. Absolutely. So there's different reasons. It it's just it just has to become a normal in your life that you're going to leave that much earlier to allow that buffer room to get to work, to get to your doctor's appointments, to and get to wherever. And road construction. We still have that considerable construction out by Araby and the 
uh, Interstate 8 for the yes. traffic interchange. Down to one lane. And with Gila Ridge back in school today, that may have caused, or they, they were back last week, but we have all the other elementary district one schools yeah. along that stretch of 24th. Otondo, right. uh, Desert Mesa, and the college starts here in a couple weeks mm -hmm. too. So that will be an additional flow of traffic, mm -hmm. hoping that part of that has, some of the restrictions have actually lifted by then. I think they're supposed to be done by the 20th maybe, hoping that's the case. But again, anyone who's traveled through that area knows that it's a big project, should be wrapping up by this fall sometime. But again, it, it, those alternate routes are a little bit uh, fewer and far between out in that area. So I would give myself 15 minutes extra to get where at you're least, going. That's what I, I had to adjust and kind of reacclimate just to be able to get to work. And I found another way. I'm not telling you what it is. <laughs> No. <laughs> She's keeping that to herself. The, the the agriculture workers and I are very close now. <laughs> <laughs> there, are, well, there are plenty of alternate yes. routes, though. You just, I mean, it may not be something that you're used to, but, you know, take a Saturday or Sunday on your day off and just go out for a drive and, you know, find different ways to get places. One of the things I wanted to make sure people are aware of, because I see it every single day, school zones are from sign to sign. Yes. Once you hit that middle, doesn't mean you can speed up again. You have to wait until you pass that last sign. I and see it every single it, day. Doesn't it say in school zone? Yes. In a school zone, yes. Okay. And and that's, but like I said, it goes back to everybody being in a, in a in hurry. hurry. It's, it's an inconvenience. But, you know, it's an inconvenience for a good reason. Mm -hmm. It's it's people's We're trying safety. We're to save lives. Kids, you know. <laughs> yeah. Come on. All right. Well, our guest today is Sergeant Lori Franklin with the Yuma Police Department. We'll take a quick Lotus Day Spa and Salon Selfie as soon as we sign off for the show. We want to thank you for coming in. Anytime. Coming up tomorrow, we have Hillary from the Humane Society of Yuma. And we also have Francesca from La Fonda. And we might be having two vocalists in town from American Idol to talk about their audition experience. So Ooh. stay tuned. We're still trying to finalize that if their schedule will allow. All right. Sounds good. It's Today in Yuma, KCYK Yuma and KLJZ Yuma. Lori. Right. Let you me flip you. my switch in here. Yeah, let, let her flip the switch real quick. There were